to start? I really don't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm sick of this. I'm tired. I, I hate this. Finish this like 1.30. Hunter, Hunter won't shut up. He won't shut up with his stupid face. At least we got that. We got so much shadowing him to replace him, so whatever. I, I don't have to listen to him as much. Let's just, let's just do this. Let's just get this over with, all right? I don't, I don't get paid enough. I don't even get paid for this. I don't get paid Neither do I. All right. Hello, Hello. welcome back to the, to the UConn Tonight Show. I'm your host, Tony Tyson. I'm your co-host, Brian Higgins. And here's what's new in the news this week. This week, the U.S. Surgeon General said that for certain medical conditions and symptoms, the use of marijuana can be helpful. The conditions listed include watching bad movies, eating Taco Bell, and listening to, to Pink Floyd. In a recent court case against Johnson & Johnson, the plaintiff Benita Pledge was brought to tears after hearing how much effort had gone into hiding the fact that the drug Risperdal could cause boys like her son to grow female breasts. When she reached for a comment, her son was still in the bathroom. A 911 operator in Maryland told a young woman to stop whining after she reported that her father had been fatally struck by a car while changing a flat tire. This comes after reports of the same operator telling people to stop their own damn heart attack and asking if they needed the wambulance. A man in Philadelphia was detained for more than 20 hours at an airport and is filing a lawsuit against the TSA for what is undoubtedly the most thorough cavity search of all time. Chipotle founder Steve Ells said this week that McDonald's chicken, was, chicken farm was, quote, the most disgusting thing he'd ever seen in his life. McDonald's responded by asking if he'd seen Chipotle's bathrooms. A police officer in Britain has been suspended over allegations that he was using a police helicopter to film people having sex. Wow, there's lonely, and then there's using a police helicopter to spy on people having sex lonely. The man spoke in his own defense, saying that his on-the-ground snooping was getting boring, and he was looking for a grander, more cinematic feel to his creepiness. A case in Nevada has ruled that FBI... All right. A case in Nevada has ruled that FBI agents can dress up as internet repairmen and enter a suspect's home without, search, without a search warrant. But what's more shocking is that California just ruled the same for porno actors. A reportedly frugal man in, in Brattleboro, Vermont, died this week, leaving almost $8 million to local hospitals and libraries. Little is known of how this man came by as well, but the money was dropped in a duffel bag by a large man named Tito. This week, Harvard University's Faculty of Arts and Sciences formally banned all sexual relationships between professors and undergraduates. Truly one of the finest weeks in recent memory for Harvard graduate students. A recent survey found that college freshmen now care less about partying and more about financial and academic success. They, uh, the study also found that they wouldn't chug this beer. They wouldn't, you little nerds. A Philadelphia police officer was sentenced to 17 and a half years in prison for stealing from drug dealers. Police said they grew suspicious when they realized the evidence locker was his nickname for his nose. After learning that the technology chain Radio Shack has filed for bankruptcy this week, millions around the country were shocked to hear that Radio Shack was still a company. Coca-Cola was forced to withdraw their Twitter campaign, hashtag make it happy, after they were tricked into tweeting large portions of the introduction to Hitler's Mein Kampf. Some people are shocked, but really, think of an animal more Aryan than the polar bear. It has been revealed that a new line of Samsung TVs can record your voice and sell the information to third parties. That's right, Samsung will now have thousands of hours of you asking who that character on Game of Thrones is. A recent study found that over half of the DNA found on New York subways did not match any known organism and only 0.2% matched the human genome. A leader of the study said that he wants people to look at subways the same way you'd look at a rainforest, because spending time in either will likely kill you from disease. Canada's Supreme Court has voted to allow doctor-assisted suicide. While this is a controversial issue, the court ruled that doctors will need a signed and notarized okie-dokie from the patient before tying them to the back of a moose and leaving them in the woods. Actor Jeff Bridges has recently released an album called Sleep Tapes, which features Bridges' voice over ambient sounds and music. I'm not going to joke about this, because it's literally the greatest thing that's ever happened. A Venezuelan man has had his appearance dramatically altered in order to look like Captain America's arch nemesis, Red Skull. You know, that super, that super well-known villain, Red Skull? A woman in Wisconsin was, was forced to leave a McDonald's after bringing in a baby kangaroo that she was apparently using to cope with emotional distress. McDonald's eventually withdrew their, co their complaint after a thorough count ensured them that none of their baby kangaroos had escaped and they could continue making the McRib. A family in Missouri is in trouble after staging a four-hour kidnapping of their six-year-old in order to teach him about stranger danger. The kidnapping involved luring the little boy into a truck, tying him up and taking him into a basement where he was told that he would never see his mommy again. Good call, parents. There really are some weirdos out there. The family said they... Did it... 
The family said they staged the kidnapping because their son was being, quote, too nice to strangers. The family also planted bombs in his books because he was getting too smart. Texas Congressman Joe Barton recently lobbied to have a bill he introduced to Congress changed from House Bill 666 because of the number of satanic connotations. House Speaker John Boehner struck down the proposal, saying, None shall interfere with the will of the Dark One. Well, we have some great guests on the show for you this week. We have representatives from USG and Huskython. Stay tuned for more UConn Tonight Show. Hello and welcome back to the UConn Tonight Show. I'm your host, Tony Tyson. I'm your co-host, Brian Higgins. And here are our guests on the show today are... Roma Romanov. I'm Claire Price. All right. Roma, Claire, what are you here representing? What organization are you with today? Um, well, we are the current uh, president and vice president of the undergraduate student government, or that's, USG. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what does is, what is USG do? Like we, a couple weeks ago, we had uh, Subog president come in and they explained what they do. What's different between what Sub President Subog does and what President U USG does? I mean, I think the quick way to summarize is Subog does all the fun concerts and <laughs> we do all the boring administrator relations. Oh, okay. Um, but we're basically, we um, take any issues you might be having as a student and try to solve it with the administration. Yeah, we're basically the voice of the students to the administration in a lot of what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so were you at all involved in the whole, we need a new gym process? Were you, were you two involved in that? Or how does, or was it just, I saw petitions, but I didn't really understand how that worked. Yeah, um, actually we had a quite a big, um, big role in that. We went to the board of trustees who decides everything for UConn and advocated for a new gym. And um, now uh, we've just formed a student committee that is going to be involved in the design of the new gym. So letters went out for that. Um, and we will be picking that committee um, on December 5th. That's awesome, that's yeah. awesome. So you can apply. I can yeah, apply. Yeah, and you can apply, <laughs> yeah, and you can apply. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And as you, as you talked earlier, I am known for being very professional yeah. and on time for all of my meetings. It's not like I have to be anywhere in six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> of course not, I'm very on time for these things. So uh, let's talk specifically your roles in USG. Like, what does the president do specifically? Um, so I would say the president is more externally focused. I meet a lot with um, with uh, the administrators, uh, such as Michael Gilbert, who's um, uh, vice president for student affairs, uh, Ellie, uh, who is our dean of students, um, and I'm just also responsible for maintaining the internal workings of the organization and making sure that we're fulfilling our mission. All right, awesome. And then the vice president has. Um, the role of sort of being, uh, the way I see it, is internally overseeing the organization, just overseeing the, the office staff that we have, the office workers, um, just overseeing a lot of logistical things, how the organization is actually run, as well as being a historian and sort of um, looking into the organization internally, basic, basically. Like the culture of yeah, the organization. Yeah, the culture of the organization, making sure that people are working well together, that we're actually getting things done. <laughs> Awesome. That's awesome. So are there any other um, positions or any other way that someone could get involved in USG? I know you mentioned like the committee the, about the gym, but are there any other ways that people can get involved in USG? Definitely. Uh, we have five committees and anyone can join and show up um, and they meet once a week. Um, that's academic affairs, external affairs, funding board, student development and student services. Or you could run for it to be a senator and um, those elections take place in the spring and in the fall. Um, or you could run to be president or vice president. So, well, yeah, you there you go, I'm yeah. Gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Yeah, <laughs> you should start campaigning. <laughs> you start campaigning. <laughs> start now. <laughs> Well, I'm not officially announcing my candidacy <laughs> running for president of USG right now, but I'll, I'm going to put some polls out there. Campaign strategy, we need to strategize. <laughs> <laughs> we probably have to spend some time working on that, and it's probably not our style, so we'll, your jobs are secure for now. <laughs> thank you, thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> the whole work uh, thing. Uh, uh, I like to walk around with clown masks on all the time. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Scare our guests before they get here. <laughs> All right, so is there any, any news updates or anything you want to tell us about what uh, USC is currently working on or advocating for us? Sure. Well, recently we had um, a Safety Begins With Us conversation, which dealt with talking about sexual assault prevention on campus. And this was 
a really unique um, sort of forum conversation we had because we had representatives from the police, the dean of students there, uh, representatives from the Title IX office, and it was a very open conversation, you know, nothing was scripted and it wasn't like these administrators were out there presenting for the students, it was more like a free for all questions and a big conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's something this year particularly that UHD has been trying to tackle. Um, we're, we're also working on getting guard dogs up and running, which is our safe rides program. Um, and uh, that would give you free rides home on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday nights. And we are working to decrease the cost of textbooks as well. So lots of, lots of good things. So you're helping <laughs> us party and you're... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Save money. Yeah, oh. saving money. Who says you do boring this, stuff? This is why we like to do too. I get it. I can see it. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> You guys are heroes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, so how, how, let's say, how do you guys have, like, social media that people could, like, try to contact you guys on through? Or we do. Yes. Go ahead. Go yes. ahead. Yeah. So yeah. we Go have Yukon UHD on Instagram. Yeah. We have a Twitter account, a Facebook account. And um, they're really active. We post a lot of information out on there. Um, anything, basically anything that we do, a super easy way is just go follow us. So mm -hmm. definitely check Our those website out. as well. Are you guys on Tinder? No, but no. No, you have Snapchat. Oh, so. wait, you guys have to Snapchat. I was going to joke, <laughs> ask about a Snapchat, but you guys actually have a Snapchat. Yeah, we actually have yeah. Snapchat. No, I, I'm not sure if it's used. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we have an account, and Tinder, I think, would be the next step. <laughs> yeah. Do you like, do you match with a uh, USG? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not sure how many swipes you would get <laughs> <laughs> after the uh, after the lower cost of books and free rides home. There we go. There you get some yeah. more. You'll definitely that's, get some. That's what we would need. Yeah. <laughs> De definitely guaranteed some today. We should, we'll, we should look into that. <laughs> 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 so you mentioned a website. Uh, what's, the, what's the website for uh, people to contact you guys or get, get to more information about you guys? Yeah, it's um, all of the above. Uh, more information, you can contact your senator that represents you. Um, we've got our pictures up by our names and a short blurb about us, um, like the senators do, and then the executive board. And then there's also a um, concern suggestion box. So if you have a problem that you want raised, um, then you can enter into the box and it actually goes directly to Roma and myself. So um, we've, we've received some good um, some good input through that. That's awesome, <laughs> yeah. that's great. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, Senator, we can get contact with our Senator that represents us. How do we know mm -hmm. like, which Senator represents us or like how does that actually work? Well, so all of the um, residence halls have uh, residential Senators and then there's the commuters, they have um, some Senators as well and also the all the schools get represented, like the business school, CLAS, mm -hmm. um, then we also have um, multicultural and diversity senators. So it's really, you just see either, depending on where you live, what school you're a part of, um, who you can reach out to. Okay. There's usually always more than one. Yeah. Mm. Seems like you have usually like at least two or three. Yeah, yeah, like. exactly. That's awesome, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else you guys want to plug and let us know about USG, how people are looking involved or anything? Yeah, I would say definitely check us out on um, our media um, and uh, feel free to reach out to us if you ever have any concerns. Um, and um, if you want to get involved, stop by. Uh, we are located on the second floor of the Union. It's up the half staircase that is opposite Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. That's, that's yeah, what we stop tell by people. anytime? Yeah. Yeah. Right, definitely. You're friendly. <laughs> You're in a high traffic area where the where the Dunkin' Donuts, Donuts is. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great location. Great yeah, great location. Yeah. Grab All grab right. a cup of coffee. Awesome. Roma. Thanks for thank coming you. on. Claire, thanks, thanks for coming, coming thank on. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, thank you so much. All right. All right. We'll be back with more UConn Tonight Show. Hello and welcome back to the UConn Tonight Show. I'm your host, Tony Tyson. I'm your co-host, Brian Higgins. And our show today, we have uh, representatives from Husky Thon, Kelly and Ryan. Kelly, thanks for coming thanks on. Thanks for coming you. on the show. No problem. All right, so one of you tell us, what is Husky Thon? What do you guys do? All righty, so Husky Thon is a year-long fundraiser for Connecticut Children's Medical Center. It culminates in this big 18-hour dance marathon. This year, it's taking place on March 7th at the Fieldhouse, and we're hoping to have thousands of dancers dancing, being morale captains, participating, and just doing everything they can to be FTK, which is for the kids. Okay, so how do people end up um, raising donations, or how do, how, do they, how do you guys raise your funds mainly? 
Um, well, there's a lot of things you can do. You can ask your family members and relatives for donations, or you can like go to a supermarket, stand outside and hold a can and ask for donations, and no one's really going to say no to helping sick children. So <laughs> thankfully, it's something easy to raise money for, but always something that we need to keep thinking about. That's awesome. Awesome. So how, how did Huskython begin? What is it, how did that start? Shockingly, Huskython is probably as old as a lot of seniors at UConn right now. It started back in the 1990s as a Greek fundraiser called Jail and Bail, and since then it's kind of developed into this campus-wide part of UConn culture where wherever you are from campus, be it an academic organization, Greek Life, cultural center, you have a big contribution to make to Huskython for your team, for your miracle child, and just for the tradition as a whole and the campus coming together for a philanthropic cause. That's awesome. So what events have you guys had in the past to help raise money for a Huskython? Um, so we've done Zoombathon every year and we just had our Zoombathon this Sunday. And um, you pay five dollars and you just do like your best Zoom moves. You can stay for the whole four hours. You could just stay for like one or two hours. It's up to you. Like you don't even have to be good at Zumba because I'm not. And, like, I still <laughs> Can you guys show us a Zumba move? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like all about like you kind of get like, like the hands in it, back and, and like, like you go really fast <laughs> and like just move like parts of your body. So you didn't even know you had. So that's just it's just it's just, just like yeah. yeah. All right, all you just like copy chest. them. A lot of chest and booty action. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. I, I heard there was. I don't know. Don't take my word for it. That's awesome. Do you have anyone assisting you with Zoomathon, or is it just um, the Huskython team doing, running this? The Huskython management team are, or is the group that's going to be organizing Zoomathon, mm -hmm. but in terms of the entire Huskython Dance Marathon, we have a committee of volunteers, a number of teams of dancers. We have a Jonathan's committee that's creating mini marathons at high schools around the state. And wow. we also have a number of dancer reps and fundraising reps who are working with their own individual teams to keep up morale, bring donations in, and just make sure everyone's getting pumped for March 7th. That's awesome. So do when people sign up for this, do they have to stay for the entire time or are they just recommended? Like how does that work exactly? Um, well, dancers are expected to stay for the full 18 hours, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, if it's going to be like unsafe for your health, then we're not going to force you to stay <laughs> there. But um, you can also volunteer in a three hour shift, which is good for people that don't want to commit the whole 18 hours or don't want to raise $100. Um, and then you can just don't have to be a dancer or a volunteer. You can just stop by at any point in the night and you pay admission. You can come hang out with your friends and just experience what it's all about without having to actually you participate. You can be the coffee fairy. That's a the pretty big deal. Yep. I like yeah. that. So, so you don't have to be on a team to dance for 18 hours? Nope. You can be so, an individual too. So if I just wanted to <laughs> dance for 18 hours because that's all I want to do ever, I could just go to Husky Thon and pay admission? And That is actually a perfect idea because if you end up being that person who's like, you know, forget teams, I want to do this by myself. We have a team called the Friends of Connecticut Children's Team, and it's essentially for anyone who just doesn't want to join a team. They're on this big group of people from all over campus, and you still get to dance with all the other dancers. You get to raise as much as you can for Connecticut Children's. You still get the full experience. Cool. That's awesome. So now, I'm in my junior year now, and in, in the past I've noticed with Huskython is you can notice a lot of like Greek fraternity and, sor and sorority life, you know, really like, involved in this? Is it mainly, do you see mainly just fraternities and sororities involved in this or how, who else do you see like involved in this? Because I've always felt like it's just them. I know that for my experience, I've been dancing for four years because I'm just nuts. And I first danced with Best Buddies UConn, which is a group that fosters friendships between individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. There were seven of us. We raised probably less than $200, but it I was hooked after one Husky gone, and I came back for the next three years, and now here I am on the management team. And from my perspective, I've been able to see groups coming from honor societies, residence hall floors, cultural centers, randos from Coventry who just come because they really appreciate what the students at UConn do. They were called Coventry Cares last year. They were wonderful. And anyone and everyone is welcome. That's awesome. So, so you've been dancing for four years S yeah. straight. You haven't oh, stopped dancing for <laughs> four no. So you're dancing right now? You just can't see Okay, it. wow. That's it's in the feet. Yep. Yeah. That's commitment. I can vouch for that. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. But yeah, I mean, I'm not affiliated with Greek Life, and I've been doing it for four years, and now here I am on the management team, and there's tons of people that aren't affiliated with Greek Life that are on the management team and dance and are on morale, volunteers, so. That's awesome to know that yeah. anyone can get involved. They do have a big presence, and mm -hmm. it's great, but you don't awesome. have to be in Greek Life to participate. That's awesome. Good. That's, that's really good to know. Now, I noticed you guys have some great, like, quarter zips and whatnot. How does a, a gentleman such as myself get, get a hand, my hands on something like this? Like, 
Well, ultimately, they were a team order for the Husky Don Marathon yeah. team. All 30 of us pitched in. We all got ourselves sweatshirts, and then we also pitched in for a member of the management team who used to be a miracle <laughs> child and is oh. now a student at UConn, thriving, doing great, and is such an asset to us on the management team. Mm -hmm. However, if you want a cool quarter zip like this, you can always apply for the management team for Husky Thon 2016, or start a group order with your dancer team. I mean, no one says you can't have your own bags and shirts and hats and socks and XYZ mm -hmm. with FTK on it. That's the awesome. The more the merrier. And we also have tons of stuff that we're selling. We'll have stuff at all our events and at Husseython. We have fanny packs that say FTK on them. We have drawstring bags with our brand new designed logo this year. That's awesome. Um, and we have sweatshirts from last year still with a paw print that say FTK on them. So that stuff's always for sale at all of our meetings. All right, awesome. That's good because, you know, UCTV doesn't give me enough of this stuff yet. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can trade like a Husky Thon fanny pack for a UCTV fanny pack. I would love I'll one figure of something those. out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, figure, we'll work on designing that. <laughs> so now you mentioned that there were uh, you have a miracle child on your uh, on the on the management team. What is like a miracle child, and is that like where we see where our money goes, or what? It, like how what is that? Yeah, so um, every hour at Huskython, you'll hear a child's story from their experience with Connecticut Children's or their parents' story if they're too young. And that's definitely like one of the motivating factors for the night is like you're there for 18 hours, like why are you there? And you get to see exactly what you've been fundraising for and it definitely like keeps you motivated and going throughout the night, so. As well, each dancer team or group of dancer teams gets a miracle child that they get to make a shirt for, enjoy Husky Thon with, enjoy the inflatables and the kids' corner and all the activities centered around the Miracle Children and families. And as well, you get to foster a friendship and a relationship with a family that's literally probably lived at Connecticut Children's for a decent part of the last couple of years and who have not been always able to put themselves or their children first just because of what life has handed them. So as the dancer team, that's what you get to do every Husky Thon. You get to put that family first and make sure that they and their chid or child are having the time of their lives. That is awesome knowing that you can see where the money is going and see that it's actually helping people. I, this is really great. So for Husky Thon, I sound, I, from my understanding, there might also be like other dance marathons other schools do. Do you guys ever meet with other schools or is it just Connecticut Husky Thon, no one else? <laughs> um, actually in October we went to a big dance marathon collaboration in Boston mm. and um, we were definitely the largest represented school, the largest dance marathon in the Northeast currently for Connecticut or for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals and it was really great to be able to like interact with them and like they wanted to like know so much about what we do and like just to be able to help them because like it's not just Connecticut Children's for us it's like every children's hospital like we can help benefit them through like just like our knowledge of like dance marathons so we can like help the smaller schools and the smaller dance marathons to grow every year so that was really cool. Even though we are like the big Kahuna dance marathon in Connecticut, mm -hmm. there is still Q-thon at Quinnipiac University. Mm -hmm. There is Charger-thon starting this year at the University of New Haven. Mm -hmm. And there are other dance marathons at other small high schools around the state. So to celebrate that, one of the initiatives of the management team this year was to get a proclamation from Governor Malloy's office calling March 7, 2015, Connecticut Dance Marathon Day to celebrate oh. the hard work of not just the Connecticut Huskies who you know, work their butts off, dance for 18 hours, but everyone around the state who in the past, currently, and in the future will work endlessly FTK, so. That is awesome. All right. Well, sounds like Husky Thon's a great thing. I'm, I know that I, you guys got me sold. I'm hooked. I'm going to join. I don't know about Brian. Are you getting? I will be dancing for 18 hours. Maybe not there, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> that you sounds got, great. You got me sold on that. <laughs> At least stop by. <laughs> awesome. Well, just to remind everyone, make sure you sign up for Husky Thon. It's March 7th, and the... Where is it again? It's going to be in the field house. In the field house. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. All right. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you. No problem. We'll be back with more UConn Tonight Show.